Happy Holidays from Wisco Dice. And happy holiday gaming to you all. We've been doing a lot and hope you have been too. Yeah, so we're going to chat about all of our holiday gaming on this week's episode of Board Games and Coffee. Welcome to Wisco Dice. Hey, you folks, I am your host, the Cozy with the Most, and I am joined today by... Hey, I'm Suzanne. And guess what? It's another time for Happy Holidays, Happy Holiday Gaming, and most importantly, board us, games. you, board games <laughs> and, and coffee. coffee. All right, so let's start it off with what are you drinking today? Well, today I am having a London Fog, so... Or hot Earl Grey tea with steamed milk and a dash of vanilla. And I've got a um, latte that's uh, made with Electric Monkey Espresso from Just Coffee, Coffee Cooperative. And uh, also uh, with uh, one of my gifts that uh, apparently you guys decided to give me for my birthday, which is in just a few days. Uh, a little early, so yes. I've got a... Uh, <laughs> We're not good at waiting. <laughs> what, a cappuccino? What is it? A cappuccino or espresso, espresso machine? Make, espresso machine. A, machine. An, an espresso machine. It's actually fairly nice. It's got a nice little steamer. We figured it out this morning. So we're we all having fancy, fancy drinks and uh, enjoying it on, on today's board game and coffee, which I absolutely love uh, because I love had fancy uh, coffee drinks. Yes. Yes. And, you know... Easier than running out. Yeah. To get, cheaper, to too. Get Quite a bit cheaper. Well, yeah. well long term, <laughs> that machine, I'm sure, was not cheap. Yeah. But so, anyway, so today, before we get going into what we have been doing, we'd like to hear from you what you have been doing and uh, or plan to do gaming wise for the holidays and into the new year. Yeah, let us know in the comments below, just like some of these other people. Who have uh, left us great comments on previous episodes of Board Games and Coffee. And of course, if you have a question for us, make sure you leave that in the comments as well. That might become a topic for an upcoming episode of Board Games and Coffee. And while you're doing that, don't forget to smash, smash that, that like button. button. And also subscribe if you haven't already. Because we love bringing content and knowing what you are interested in or enjoying helps us focus what we're making and... Uh, and inspire us a bit more, too. Yep, and no matter whose channel it is, always make sure that you do that for whatever content you really enjoy and like. It goes a long ways to helping those those content creators out, uh, whether they're big or small. Uh, so just make sure you do that. Just smash the like button for us and do that right now. Right now. All right. <laughs> All right, so now... So what have we been doing for the holidays for gaming? Well, we... If you have watched the previous uh, videos of ours... You may know that I have really been wanting to uh, go through some of our legacy or campaign games. Yeah, we were talking about our table of opportunity. We don't have a shelf. We have a table of we opportunity. We have a table of opportunity that was good, probably getting close to ready to collapse or at least knock over at some point. So, with the extra downtime and not having to work with the holiday season and uh, coincidentally a lack of family get-togethers this year so we, we just yep. have a small and small thing here at the home college. so it was a great time to crush through a bunch of games yes and it, well i shouldn't well, say a bunch of games we played a number of games <laughs> plays we did not play a different. number of different copies yes. there's a reason why here in just a moment so if you notice our table looks a little bit different. It is the same table we always sit at when we talk yeah. with you. Yeah, we had to put the toppers on it because yes. buried underneath is one of those games. Yes. So, shall we talk about that game and how we acquired it? Uh, yeah, why don't you talk about that game first? Let's, lay, let's kick off with that one. So... Because we are about... As soon as we're done recording this, we're going to go play that some more. I don't think we have a choice. Yeah, we don't have the a choice. The Taskmaster upstairs is going to demand it. Mm -hmm. So... <laughs> <laughs> So, our daughter's favorite game right, is Ticket to Ride. She just loves this game, plays in tournaments on BGA, is always playing. And she noticed that they had uh, Ticket to Ride, Legend of the West coming out. And we always do a family Christmas present. And we decided that was going to be our family Christmas present this year. 
and we have been yep. exploring that yeah, and yep. it stays set up on this table so we because we need the space yeah, we need to try to power through it while she's home yes before uh, she goes back later so this week we didn't do a lot of research about like how long it, or how many plays nope. it was going to be or anything like that so she said um, i want it we said okay you rarely ask for games so let, let, let's talk a little bit about ticket to ride uh, legends of the old west the the legacy version of ticket to ride uh, we don't want to drop any spoilers about gameplay, no. so don't worry about that. We're not going to give away any spoilers about this game from a legacy perspective. We want to, we want you to fully discover that for yourselves. Uh, but what I do want to do is comment on a few things that we discovered once we opened the box, just to make sure that uh, folks know it if they're considering this for a family holiday or a family legacy game to get together and play yeah. because there are a couple of legacy games we've played previously mm -hmm. that i would qualify or say fall into that family legacy yep. experience things like my city my island mm -hmm. um, technically we haven't played my island but i feel very confident saying it falls into it's, that yeah it's very similar this is definitely a family Game pandemic legacy is, I would say, also could potentially if your family's up to playing Pegasus. Maybe uh, for pandemic. a little bit older kids, this you yeah, could do older. with you know ones that. Yeah, I mean, the Ticket to Ride needs not... a little bit older to audience as well, but maybe it's it, you know it's it's arguable. It's about the same audience, I think. In the subject matters a little. Yeah. So with Ticket to Ride, it is a uh, legacy. It is twelve games. Yep. And each game is going to take you, we're averaging about a, about an hour. No, it's 40, hour, it's, with, no, with setup about, and end of game stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's about an hour and 15 minutes from setup to end of game. We have been able to leave the game set up, obviously. That's why we have toppers on the table right now, because it's set up underneath this yeah. table. Which and, does help, I think, for kids yeah. playing, playing and through it. A big part of our approach to playing it is that we're letting... Um, our daughter open all of the boxes and get to see all, you know, she gets to discover all the new unlocks and things like that. Yeah, I'm I'm apparently in charge of the rules for the most part, although I'm shifting some of those duties. <laughs> your, your end of the table is getting uh, a little bit full. Yeah, my end of the so. table. The map has expanded to my end of the table, but... Uh, yeah. Um, so yeah, you definitely, it's, it starts a very simple, I will say it starts a very simplified, basic ticket to ride game. So you've never and obviously, played ticket to ride, it's a great way yeah. to get warmed up to it. And it's building over the course of the campaign. A couple of things we haven't discovered yet, and we will drop a note in the comments as soon as we wrap up the campaign, is if the campaign itself is playable after it. Like it, it's clearly a legacy game, so you're not going to be able to play the campaign again. But if you're going to be able to continue playing your copy, because one of the things with mm -hmm. this is that it's a fairly expensive legacy game. Yes. Now, yeah. 12 games of Ticket to Ride for a lot of folks might be all the Ticket to Ride they play in a year. Uh, or all the Ticket to Ride that they maybe yeah, ever want to can, play in their lifetime, handle. potentially. Uh, but uh, I, we all love Ticket to Ride. We enjoy playing it a yeah. lot. Obviously, our daughter loves playing Ticket to Ride. So it's been a great, fun game for us to play and play quite a bit. Yes. Yep. Yeah. And if you know, I have some ideas. If we can keep it to replay, whatever the final version of it looks like, you know, to you know, dec use it for decorations or something yeah. somehow because it's a it's a family activity that we are all doing yeah. and enjoying. We were just so. talking yesterday about how we're going to in our game space we call the library where we store all of our games about how we're gonna finish a wall in there and actually put up all our copies of like pandemic legacy that we finished so it's out of the way just enough so that people that not, are back so there exploring the, the game library don't necessarily have spoilers but if they want to check it out it'll be there and we'll be able to go back and look at it and, and smile about those memories that we had when we were playing yep. that legacy game mm -hmm. and we're not just tossing out the game after it's done exactly <laughs> so that is you know that is kind of a downside with legacy games is once you play them mm -hmm. uh you oftentimes can't keep playing them and a legacy game different than a campaign game you can't necessarily pass it on to another family or another gaming group who hasn't played it yet yeah that is an important so. point because that's really how we differentiate between a legacy and a campaign game a legacy game you're permanently modifying the components in some manner so that uh, the game will be completely unique for you as you continue to play through it. Many legacy games are in a campaign mode of some form, mm -hmm. and that at the end of the campaign, you're done, you don't play the game, you, 
your your base game. You've learned the out. whole story. You've learned the story. <laughs> they, there's no replayability to it. There are a couple of legacy games like Clank Legacy and My City. I think My Island also does this where you can continue. Like once it's you've modified Vegas. your yep. game, it's now available for you to uh, do again. And something yeah. like My City, we could, since we played it as a two player, we could go back and play the campaign a second time with the other two player boards if we really wanted to play that much more my city yes so i mean i think we have other Mm -hmm. we may at some point because it was a fun little campaign to do yeah it was was enjoyable yeah yeah not not my favorite but i know there's a lot of huge fans out there of of my city and and my island i think for the two of us i've heard my island's better but yeah i think so i mean i think at some point we would like to try my play my island um i think for the two of us playing we enjoy uh, legacy games that are a little more intense, so, a little crunchier, I guess some people would call them. So, so what's the other game so, that we're playing? Well, and oh, I don't know, we're like like in through. For, so for like Ticket to Ride Legacy, we're through. Yeah. I think our seventh play, our sixth or our seventh play, I think of it. So yeah, it's, we're, we're closing in on on getting to the end. Yes. All right. So then, what's the other the other, the other one, legacy game that we we've, we've gotten a little bit? Yeah, I, arguably. Um, is, um, well, I certainly think this version of Pandemic Legacy is crunchier. I I would argue that Pandemic Legacy Season 1 is at about the same level. It probably is. But this one, so we're playing Pandemic. And it's a campaign, it's a co-op. So so we're mentioning Pandemic Legacy, and if you watched Table of Opportunity Games and we wanted to get to the table, you already know which which version we're talking about, but that is Season 2. So, I don't know, two, three years ago, we burned through the second half or most of season one, and then we did all of season zero, and we had a blast doing it, but we did it all over a holiday season, and by the time I was done with, I don't know, 30-plus plays of Ticket to Ride, I had enough of Ticket pandemic. to Ride, or of, yeah, of pandemic. pandemic, I had enough Pandemic just for a lifetime, so. And yeah, I think we even met, mixed in some um, Pandemic Cthulhu, which is not a legacy game that yep. in there, too. And, we had a and then we did Clank Legacy, I think, that same season. Yeah, and then we did, I think then we did My Island, or My City. We started My City, I think, at the tail end of it, yep. yeah. So we, we did a lot in one fell swoop, and we kind of had stopped. We've done some campaign game, or legacy, I guess. I guess uh, um, Gloomhaven is a legacy game, too. Mm-hmm. By, de- by our definition, like yeah. Gloomhaven would be you are permanently modifying the game. Yeah. So, Pandemic Legacy Season 2, uh, similar premise to, all, to the other Pandemics and Pandemic games, uh, but it is a cooperative, so you are either winning or losing together, mm-hmm. and we have about 50-50, are we up to winning and losing? I think we're doing a little so, bit more. We're about we had a really bad run this this really time of run. season two, and I think it has maybe, some mechanics that help with that though. When so maybe it was because we haven't played a lot of pandemic lately, or maybe it was that we just didn't quite catch on to I think what it wanted us to do quite quickly enough. So we, we hit a we rough had rough, some rough really batch. bad card flips. Oh, there like, was some really yeah. bad card flips that but, uh, you just wanted to like give up. But we're. <laughs> We're back on track. I think we've we've won yeah. the last two or three games, so yeah. um, all good there. So the the big thing, the difference with Pandemic Legacy, um, and maybe we'll see this with Ticket to Ride as well, is that Pandemic Legacy is in a series of seasons. Is the way they released it. So they released mm-hmm. season one was the first Pandemic, yep, and what really was taking the game Pandemic the and playing that as a legacy game. And I won't talk about what happens. Obviously, they simplify a little bit of the pandemic rules at the beginning, so it's a little easier to learn and approach. But as you go through the campaign, they start stacking rules, the board gets modified, things are happening. It's it's really enjoyable, and the surprise about mid-campaign, if you not don't know what it is, is really awesome. <laughs> so... Then um, we did Pandemic Season Zero, which technically is the last one in publication releases. So they released Season 1, then they released Season 2, and then they released a prequel with Season Zero. Um, We did Season Zero as the prequel because we were kind of excited, a little more excited about it. It's a little more of a... It's a it's a little different take on Pandemic. You can can tell from the box, it's it's a... Not only is it a prequel, but it's a little bit more... Uh, themed around 
um, spies and mm-hmm. and that kind of thing. So uh, in espionage, so uh, but it's it's definitely still the pandemic engine is really what's driving the game. Um, it's just a, a, a retheme of that with uh, a new story to go through. Yeah, and each of the pandemic legacy seasons are their own story. So in season two, you we've advanced into the future with the results of whatever happened in season one. And unfortunately, one of the things I was a little sad to see is that there was no way to bring your results from season one into season two. It would have been awesome to be yeah, able to do that. But how many computations, games. how many like, computations they would have had to have made to, to, to do that, I don't know. They're, they're standalone games. They're marketed as standalone mm-hmm. games. That is kind of nice that you can just kind of get whichever one you can get the hand, your hands on at the time. You don't have to play them in order. Mm-hmm. Which is nice. But thematically, so. too, it makes sense why season two doesn't be able, you're not able to import in your results because it's far enough in the future that it didn't really matter they do a if you nice did in season job one. Of explaining it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, like, yes, the, the, I will say in both of the legacy games we're playing right now, the storyline is very well done and mm-hmm. very captivating and it helps progress and it's just really flows naturally. So, mm-hmm. and then there's clearly story points uh, in both legacy games that if you're paying attention to the story points mm-hmm. and it take that into you know it foreshadows and gives you an idea of what you probably should be doing and the more you pay attention mm-hmm. to some of those story hints the better i think you have your chances of performing of course there's still legacy games and there's still games so things especially like with pandemic and where those epidemic cards come in and where uh, various other infection bad things might the infection happen. cards start spawning yeah. on the board, but I really like the way season two has has taken the pandemic engine and and really just modified or changed it just enough, mm-hmm. tweaked it just enough to to really capture the story elements that they're trying to get across, and it's done very well. So yeah, I um, I am seeing with pandemic uh, season, uh, legacy season two, I am seeing this like dystopian type movie in my mm-hmm. head as we're playing it it's a very slow progressing movie obviously yeah. but and, and it's cool because yeah. like in, in all the versions of pandemic you're you're naming your characters you're you're taking kind of ownership like this is you almost in the game yep. right up to the point that you know, like you're something awful happens to your character or you retire your character i think there was definitely a more of a push to do that in season one um, and I don't remember if we changed characters much in season zero, but there was definitely a, a drive or a push that so, as you uncovered different character archetypes that you, um, so, that you may yeah. want to shift characters because, and I think this one, they, they want that they made it and they designed it in a way that lets you embrace like maybe running the same character all the way through it. Yeah. So I'll say for pandemics legacy season one, we played a three player. We started it. We three started player. three player, but and then ended. And zero and two are playing as two player. One thing that is nice with both the Pandemic Legacy games and the Ticket to Ride Legacy games is that you can have people come and go from the mm-hmm. group and change characters in Pandemic or in Ticket to Ride. You know, you have five people that can come and go, and it even says in the rules. This is not a spoiler. There's a way to account for people missing some games. Yep. So that is nice. Unlike some it, other legacy games, yeah. it's not as easy to do that with. But Yeah, yeah. Certainly, it, it, they have great rules for uh, being able to have players come and go from the game uh, and being able to... And I think I think it's probably less penalizing. Like, if you miss a game and Ticket to Ride, it's probably going to like penalize your overall results. We haven't got to the end, so we don't know for sure. But missing a game in Pandemic, you're just missing the story arc. That's it. Like, you still yeah. played mm-hmm. Pandemic, right? So there's not really anything significant there that you miss. Right. Otherwise. I mean, like, and if you It's not like, oh, to... hey, I missed a bonus. Because you're all working as a team versus in the in Ticket to Ride, it's going to be competitive. There will be a winner. Yes. And it m- Supposedly. will not be me. Well, I'm just going to say. But so... Constantly... Maybe. We don't know yet. I mean, well... we don't know how winners calculated. <laughs> You've done a really good job of hitting middle. Like... I'm second place in a lot of games. I you had a bad, also, you had I one also, really bad game, but. <laughs> yeah, yes, really bad game. So, Cozy, what is it about legacy and campaign games that you enjoy, though? Because we have a lot of them. We play a lot of them. Uh, 
I think the the thing that I enjoy the most about legacy games is the the unveiling and uncovering the story as we progress through, um, and that's it, with legacy games. It's generally I think most of them are orientated around um, all of the players working uh, either competitively against each other or cooperatively as a group, which I really like about about those style of games as well because it doesn't mean that anyone's like sitting out and having to play the bad guy or anything. That said, like our Imperial Assault, so Star Wars was... Imperial Assault campaigns that we ran from uh, FFG, we did that for two years in a row. Um, I was the overlord in both of those. I had an absolutely good time. Although yeah. I got to say, at some points, because it's really it's a five player, five players at the table. Four, those four players are going to get eighty percent of the wins. Mm -hmm. The overlord gets like twenty percent of the wins. It really. All of those wins and losses, you got to remember from the Overlord perspective, mean nothing until the last scenario. Yeah. Because the last so scenario is different. what wins or loses the campaign for you. But it's still very much the story going the, through it. Yeah. And you and know? I think like there was definitely a different... like There were certainly players that were less worried about the story and more worried about, like, hey, I just want to make my characters better or whatever... There, there was a little bit more of that, but there was still plenty of story elements mm -hmm. uh, going along the way if you were paying attention to those. Yes. Yes. For, for me, it's very similar. Like, I think that's what drives a lot of people to enjoy uh, the campaign or legacy type games is that you are unveiling the story. And you get to progress. It's like reading a book or solving a puzzle, but it just kind of keeps building upon each other where... A lot of other games you play, yes, things can change in them. You can change up scoring tiles or whatever, but they're one and mm -hmm. done. And the next time you play that game, you start completely over back from the beginning and you play through a little mini story. And mm -hmm. this is just this nice, long, extended... Um, I, I will say, though, I think you need to have space to either have it set up where you're not taking it down after every single game because that's going to get wearing on you. There's so much sometimes. It depends, to depends on the game. Like Gloomhaven is a good example of a game yeah. that you want to set up and leave set up because it's quite elaborate to set it up yes. every time. Like this Ticket to Ride, like they did a great job of putting inserts and whatnot and they, dividers in the box so that it's very easy to put away, very easy yeah. to pretty much set up. I think that wouldn't be bad. Like we're like we're fortunate enough to just be able to leave it set up, and I don't think it's that much of a bother. And it certainly is easier for us to just hey, we're going to sit down and play because it's already pretty much set up. Yeah. But I don't think that would be a decisive factor for me to enjoy that one. Mm -hmm. Pandemic, it might be a little bit more because the box is a little more of a hassle. I think. Um, I, but yeah, you know, I guess for me, I like to be able to play it like without having a break in the type of games we're playing. I think I like to power through <laughs> all of them. If I could, if I was allowed to do all twelve in one day, I would. I, I, the other, I think the other thing is, oh yes, she was unstoppable. We did what eight plays of in pandemic. Uh, yeah, it was seven plays of pandemic and one play of Ticket to Ride that uh, in, one uh, in one day. And, oh yeah. And I keep I keep asking her, are you, are you sick of playing games yet? Are you sick of these? She's like, no, no, no. no. We can keep going. <laughs> we can keep going, but other people. I think last so night. I think break. last night I'm, we had a little bit of a, a wall of of being able to functionally well, play. Yeah, so I think there was that, and different people react differently to hard losses. Yeah. Well. So, Anyways, I mean that that is something that you need to be aware of when and the, the well actually let me just say the nice thing about a lot of the campaign games that we have played is that if you lose a game of it, does not mean you are losing the campaign overall. All right, so I think anyway. I think that sums up what holiday gaming we've been playing. Yes, it's just been two games, but a lot of them two because games. they're legacy games, making you very happy, making us very happy. So let us know in the comments what you've been playing or what games maybe showed up for you as gifts uh, this holiday season. We'd love to see or hear about that uh, and find out what everybody else is doing. And, of course, uh, thank you so much for watching. We really do appreciate it. And, while you're, well, and don't forget to smash that like button, right? Yes. Happy holidays. Right. Happy holidays. Woo! Hey there, it's Conzie. Thank you so much for watching. We put out videos weekly here at Wisco Dice. Check out our channel for more great videos and don't forget to subscribe. 
We also have more great content on our website at wiscodice.com. Of course, we do this all for you, the viewers. So please like the video if you enjoyed it, and thanks for watching.